Hello. Today we'll, uh, we'll be talking about approach to um, treated patients with HIV and interaction with chronic inflammation. What I intend to do over the next few minutes is to briefly recap the, um, the role of immune activation and chronic inflammation in the clinical landscape of treated patients with HIV. Make a connection between immunosenescence and frailty, and then discuss the overlap of the emerging uh, field of geroscience and HIV, and finish off with a few practical considerations. I'd like to just briefly go over a few uh, definitions because I'll be we'll be using these terms. Acute inflammation, we're aware uh, that it's acute transient immune response to tissue injury or foreign pathogen, which facilitates allows for facilitation of repair and adaptation. Chronic inflammation refers to a low-grade persistent immune response leading to tissue degeneration and is related to persistent production of reactive molecules and cytokines by non-immune or activated immune cells. Immunosenescence, which is related obviously to chronic inflammation, refers to the aging of the uh, immune system. It's caused by chronic antigenic overload, uh, resulting in a decreased output of na uh, naive immune cells, as well as many other uh, immune changes. And as many people is, uh, feel is characterized by an inverted uh, CD4 to CD8 ratio. Inflammaging refers to the chronic systemic low-grade, clinically undetectable inflammation resulting from an unbalanced immune regulation. And it does occur with advanced age, and it is associated and a risk factor for chronic age-related disorders. Geroscience is the new evolving field of um, identifiable and potentially modifiable underlying uh, biochemical processes reversed, referred to as the pillars of aging, which increase the risk of age-related uh, conditions. And we know in the general population that chronic inflammation, inflammation is a risk factor for the development of many age-related uh, conditions. And um, there is a, a, a relationship between chronic inflammation, inflammation, and the development of frailty. Now, we, we're, this is where everybody's familiar with this, that the survival of effectively treated older persons with HIV approaches that, but it's not exactly the same uh, of the, uh, to the general population, about 85%. Though in some um, subgroups, the survival may be the same. We feel that the, the major reason for this uh, decreased survival is due to two things, the premature development of age-related comorbidities and increased risk of the early development of uh, traditional geriatric syndromes. And what are geriatric syndromes? They're conditions which don't fit into the discrete disease categories. They have multifactorial etiologies and involve multiple organ systems. The common ones that we think about are polypharmacy, falls, mobility, uh, cognitive impairment, and of course, frailty, which is one of the uh, more most common uh, geriatric uh, syndromes among others. So frailty is a state of increased vulnerability to biologic environmental stressors, leading to increased risk of comorbidities, disabilities, cognitive decline, and overall mortality. And frailty, as I mentioned, is associated with a chronic inflammatory state. Now, in HIV individuals, uh, the potential causes which increase or uh, contribute to the uh, chronic active immune chronic immune activation and the uh, clinical consequences um, include a number of factors, microbial translocation, persistent uh, low-level replication of HIV, co-infections, commonly CMV, uh, 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 HCV, um, and as well as other processes which contribute to the active immune activation and thereby leading to chronic uh, inflammation, as well as various other um, uh, identifiable um, impairments and end organ uh, da damage, and as we're understanding, increased risk of uh, geriatric syndromes as well. And what this figure is meant to represent is that we have here, following exposure to HIV, we have a huge um, increase in immune activation and, and uh, inflammation, 
which is um, very responsive to appropriate uh, combination antiviral uh, therapy. And then what happens over time, and we're familiar with this, is that as, especially in, in older people, you do have an ongoing um, level of chronic inflammation resulting from uh, active um, uh, immune activation. But in older people, what we see is that there is the under increase as well in the underlying age-related chronic inflammation. And on top of that, or in addition, we feel that there's uh, inflammation associated with um, uh, uh, underlying HIV um, immune uh, activation. Now, how this, what this translates into clinically is the various uh, clinical manifestations, the aging phenotype uh, with all the uh, comorbidities that we're aware of. And I'd like to uh, also uh, include in this uh, with these comorbidities is the development of uh, geriatric sy syndromes um, as well. But what's important to understand is that the problem in older persons with HIV is the delayed diagnosis of HIV. And this increases the likelihood of having lower CD4 cells at the time of presentation and lower CD4 uh, cells when starting a effective antiretroviral therapy. This leads to, uh, has a negative impact on immune recovery. And we see that in, uh, this, is, uh, this data shows that there's differences uh, between age of presentation and, um, and the CD4 count in people over the age of 50 and under the age of 50. And these differences um, um, can be uh, determined in, in different parts of the world. But there is a, an important immune um, component and immune consequence to late uh, diagnosis of uh, HIV. But the consequences uh, are that in most people, and especially in older people with HIV, despite a durable viral suppression, and even if the CD4, the plateau CD4 counts are high, they do not achieve a normal CD4 to CD8 ratio. Only a minority of individuals will have, uh, will, will have a normal CD4, CD8 ratio, which is usually greater uh, than, than one. And uh, so this is associated with a ongoing uh, immunosenescence despite effective antiretroviral therapy. And recent information shows that um, there are differences in um, the time it takes to reach, um, to have improvement in the CD4, CD8 ratio, a normalization, if you will, of the relationship. And that there are these differences uh, um, may be uh, determined may be related to the type of antiretroviral therapy that persons are, are, are on. And um, integrase inhibitor um, based uh, CART is associated with a more rapid time to uh, return towards near normal uh, of the CD4 CD8 ratio. But even in persons who have uh, um, who are on uh, integrase inhibitors, more than 50% of them still have a low ratio uh, after uh, several years of, of therapy. So we know that um, immunosenescence, as, de as demonstrated by the CD4, CD8 um, ratio, is related with uh, frailty, and um, a lower ratio is associated with an increased prevalence of uh, frailty as determined in this study by Giovanni Guaraldi using the frailty uh, index model. And as well, uh, older patients uh, with HIV also demonstrate age acceleration compared to non-frail uh, individuals on the, uh, on the order of about 10 years. And this is done through, D uh, this study was done uh, using DNA uh, methylation. Now, turning to the, the geroscience aspects, which basically looks at aging as defined by certain discrete bio, biochemical processes, which as they become better identified, may be able to be uh, subject to uh, treatment and intervention to try to mitigate uh, the uh, effects of aging. And to this model, which um, uh, is one that we consider of the various components, the environmental, uh, affects uh, immunosenescence, um, mitochondrial dysfunction, um, et cetera. We also add potential uh, impact of HIV and of certain antiretroviral um, agents. 
and a way of looking at, of thinking of together of both um, HIV and geroscience uh, is that if we look at um, that increase in comorbidities occur during normal aging, uh, but they occur more rapidly in patients with HIV. The idea is that if we think about some of the geroscience interventions, we may be able to mitigate and slow or slow down or even avoid the development of uh, some of these complications. Geroprotectors, which are drugs which are meant to specifically target some of these uh, increasingly understood um, um, uh, causes of aging are actively being studied in the general population. And there's, um, uh, for example, metformin, which uh, affects mitochondrial uh, dysfunction, and rapamycin, uh, which interacts with the, with the mTOR. Uh, there are other specific agents which are being studied to see if we can limit the, uh, the impact of some of these um, effects. And in this slide, uh, I want to focus just on the use on the, uh, on the uh, preliminary results using the JAK inhibitor, uh, ruxolitinib. Um, and what the, the very first in class trial in patients with HIV showed um, an early reduction in uh, activated uh, CD38 cells, as well as a reduction in CD14 and uh, TNF-alpha, uh, which continued throughout the course uh, of the study. So this is a very preliminary study, uh, of course, but it does give us some hope um, uh, for a possible um, interventions. And what we hope is in the near future uh, that some of these newer uh, interventions may actually benef be beneficial for the uh, treatment of frailty. And there are some preliminary results using mesenchymal cells, which showed an improvement in um, physical component of quality of life questionnaire, showed an improvement in uh, uh, gait speed, as well as a reduction in TNF-alpha using um, mesenchymal cells in a, in a preliminary study. But we shouldn't also forget that both malnutrition and obesity may also uh, interact with an impact on chronic immune activation in HIV. And these are things which lifestyle changes may be uh, effective in uh, modulating. So to summarize, uh, I'd like to just finish with a practical approach to minimize chronic inflammation in older persons with HIV. And I think it's important to remember to diagnose HIV early in persons over 50, obviously in everybody, but we should not forget about HIV in older populations and the recommendation to start uh, an integrase inhibitor based CART as soon as possible to minimize ongoing uh, immune activation and to consider switch uh, to an integrase inhibitor in treated uh, persons. To identify high-risk older patients, we can follow the recent uh, EX guidelines for frailty screening in persons above uh, 50, screen for geriatric syndromes, think about uh, uh, persons who have a low CD4, CD8 uh, ratio, especially if their absolute CD4 count is less than uh, 500. I haven't talked about biomarkers because they're really not ready for prime, uh, for prime time uh, to use for screening. So older patients should also be screened for CMV, depression, and other contributors which can impact on quality of life and functional uh, capacity. And although no specific pharmacotherapy exists at present for frailty, um, other than the preliminary studies using the geroscience mo uh, models, we, we know that uh, in the general population, resistive exercises and nutritional support do mitigate against progression uh, of frailty and may actually reverse uh, frailty in some situations. And of course, consider referral to an HIV and aging clinic or an aging specialist, which will also be discussed at the factor uh, at the, during this meeting. But the bottom line is to stay tuned. This is going to be an exciting area in the next uh, several years. Thank you very much for your attention.